What is up, XRP Army? Let's go over some exciting updates from Brad Garlinghouse and some zesty, controversial takes by Michael Saylor. Links to everything's in the description. Hit that subscribe, hit that like. Let's start with CEO at Ripple, Brad Garlinghouse. Very excited to see the number of XRP community-led events growing this year with XRP Gold Coast in March and XRP Las Vegas starting tomorrow. Hope to see some of you there and meet more of you in person at XRPL Apex. This one, of course, in Amsterdam. Let me know if you guys been to any XRP events. Uh, last night in an XRP space, I was hearing a lot of positive feedback for the one in New York, I believe last year, uh, the proper party. A lot of people enjoyed that one and I think it was very exclusive. They removed the barriers to entry and I think that uh, that's the best when events are like tightly knit, they remove barriers to entry, you're not so fixated on commercializing it and people have more fun. That's the best, right? You wanna have fun, you wanna have entertainment and not have people's barriers high. So interesting to see what comes out of these events. Um, speaking of events, guys, stay tuned with the channel. I'm going to be giving away some tickets to Futurist. Yes, I will be at Futurist in Toronto this year. And uh, for Angry Crypto, I'm also going to be giving away a couple of tickets. So stay tuned. Uh, stay connected on YouTube, on Twitter. When I make that announcement, you guys will know first. Brad proceeds to say from new native capabilities to projects building on the ledger. Momentum is growing. I believe the future is bright. We can see a stacked... Stacked team here, Brad Garlinghouse, Michael Arrington, John Deaton, uh, Jay Christopher, Giancarlo, Eleanor Terrett, and Rep. Willie Nichols. So a diverse a team that we have here, people who are going to be uh, featured guests. Why not? So nice. Good stuff. Let's continue on to this zesty stuff from Michael Saylor. Now, you guys know that the XRPL stablecoin, I think, is going to be pivotal to the growth of XRP, I think that people are really underestimating still the power and the growth that the stablecoin will provide. As a full recap, if you guys were sleeping under a rock, it's gonna be enterprise grade, US home, fiat backed, monthly attestations. It's gonna be a game changer, monumental. These are the words of David Schwartz and Brad Garlinghouse, not even mine. And so it's launching on XRPL, but also ETH. So keep that in mind, right? I don't think ETH is going to be a security. I don't think XRP is a security. I think we'll see an omni-chain interconnected world where everyone just co-mingles. But Michael Saylor, of course, being the man that he is, he says some good stuff. He says some stupid stuff. Michael Saylor predicts Ethereum spot ETF will not be approved and deemed security. But in regards to XRP, after that, BNB, Sol, XRP, ADA, he basically is saying if it's not orange, then GTFO. They will be deemed security and none of them will get spot ETF or accepted by Wall Street. I don't think so. I think this is a very, is it possible? Yes, but it's not probable. Let's go ahead and check out uh, what he has to say about this, shall we? When Ethereum is not going to be approved, sometime this summer it'll be very clear to everyone that Ethereum is deemed a crypto asset security, not a commodity. After that, you're going to see that Ethereum, BNB, Solana, Ripple, Cardano, everything down the stack is just a crypto asset security unregistered. None of them will ever be wrapped by a spot ETF. None of them will be accepted by Wall Street. None of them will be accepted by mainstream institutional investors as crypto assets. This is the one universal consensus accepted institutional grade crypto asset in the world there won't be another one when ethereum i don't know what do you guys think i mean i think that this is just an absolutist elitist maximalist attitude and obviously when you're so heavily invested in it then your views are skewed right to say that nothing else will be accepted is a far stretch because the evidence shows us that judge torres gave the green light. It's not a security. XRP is not a security. We also know that in Canada and other places, there's already Ethereum ETFs being uh, filed for. We also know that Hashkey, the partner, the Japanese uh, partner, has access to Ripple, has access to a billion global users. We also know that they filed for multiple Bitcoin and Ethereum ETFs. And we also know that that may be one and many other entities that will file an 
XRP ETF. And at this moment, we already have a Cardano ETP, the Swiss ETP. I think it's ticker CASL, if I'm not mistaken, to take advantage of liquid staking and depreciating assets. So I don't know what drugs this guy's taking. Let me know. Let me know what he's taking because uh, it just sounds like a salty old man. Like, I love Bitcoin. Don't get me wrong, but there's a use case for this stuff too, right? Bitcoin is not too practical for sending and receiving. It's, it's a little difficult on the native, like, network. I think that there is a use case for BNB, for Sol, for XRP, for ADA. Different. I think that there's a symbiotic relationship. And I see a future, uh, in cro contrast to what Michael Saylor says, I see a future where we're going to see, guys, multiple ETFs. That includes XRP. Baskets where you can invest in and, and kind of skew and spread the risk among many. It could be a basket with Sol, XRP, ADA, Bitcoin. It could be 10 altcoins. It could be, you know, so flexibility, selection, diversification. I think these are key. I don't agree with this uh, statement that uh, he's, he's basically saying, screw all these projects. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I agree with this. And still people praise this clown. You know, like, I don't want to call him a clown, but this is a clown statement. It's it's going to look really bad when XRP ETFs come, when Ethereum ETFs come. And we'll be looking back at this clip. I'll bookmark this. We'll be looking at back at this clip. And I hope Michael Saylor has a statement because unfortunately, Bitcoin maxis kind of remind me of the ultra bearish people who are like, it's going to zero, it's going to zero, it's going to zero. And a broken clock is right twice a day. Imagine if I told you it's in the middle of August, it's going to snow, bro, don't go outside. And you're like, bro, it's hot, go out. It's going to snow, it's going to snow. One month, two months, three months, four months, five months later, inevitably when it does snow, you're like, ah, see, I was right. I was right. And we know that timing is everything. And we know that we have to be probable, not possible. Is it possible that he's right? Sure, but... There's enough evidence from us, from Ripple and many other projects and the US Congress and what the CFTC has said about projects other than Bitcoin. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Let's be practical here. Michael Saylor is just being cap here and just obsessing the hell out of Bitcoin. As he does. He's just the orange man. Nonetheless, let me know what you guys think. What are your thoughts about the Las Vegas event and Amsterdam? Any events that excite you? Uh, looking forward to giving away a couple of tickets to, to the Canadian fam. I know there's a lot of Canadians in Angry Crypto. And looking forward to meeting you guys in Toronto this, this August. And what are your thoughts about Michael Saylor? Is this just cap? Do you agree with me? Do you think that uh, he's right? That everything else is going to be deemed a security? Let me know. Hit that subscribe. Hit that like. I'll see you guys in the next Angry Crypto show.